This procedure shows how to assemble and use the microfluidic probe or MFP. The microfluidic components of the MFP are gas tight syringes, glass capillary tubes, microtight connectors from Upchurch and the MFP head. This video will present the critical steps of assembly and alignment. Once assembled, the MFP can be used with a large variety of substrates and reagents for surface patterning and processing. Hi, I'm Cecile Perrault. I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the laboratory of David Yanker in the Department of Biomedical Engineering at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. Hi, I'm Mohamed Kasaime. I'm a PhD candidate on David Yanker's lab on the Biomedical Engineering Department, McGill University. Hi, I'm David Yanker. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. And uh, I would like to welcome you today uh, to our demonstration on the microfluidic probe. Today we will show you a procedure of the operation and use of the microfluidic probe. We use this procedure in our laboratory for surface processing and patterning. So let's get started. To start this protocol, plastic syringes and needles are used to fill gas-tight glass syringes with reagents, ensuring that no air bubbles are present. Typically, we use a 1 to 10 microliter syringe for injection and a syringe with 5 to 10 times larger volume for aspiration. Next, using nanotight fittings with low dead volume, the syringes are connected to capillary tubing. The capillaries are then filled and checked for bubbles under the microscope. The MFP chip is pre-filled with buffer solution to prevent the trapping of bubbles when connecting the capillaries. Finally, the capillaries are plugged into the PDMS connection piece in the microfabricated probe head. With the MFP now assembled, we are ready to begin setting it up. The substrate is inserted into a homemade holder that is affixed to the microscope stage. The gap between the MFP and the substrate is critical for surface patterning processes. Using a three-point support formed by micrometer screws, the horizontal alignment is adjusted with micrometer precision. This is necessary because the substrate is processed by being scanned below the MFP. To begin setting up the MFP, the probe head is clamped into the probe holder and mounted on the probe station on top of an inverted microscope. The syringes are then placed into high precision syringe pumps. Next, using a pair of goniometers, the alignment of the MESA of the MFP with the substrate is adjusted by observing the Newton's rings, also known as interference fringes. These appear when the MFP is brought into contact with the substrate. The point of contact and the frequency of the rings serve as indication of the tilt. When the MFP is aligned with the surface, a single interference ring extends over the entire surface. 
This measure also serves to calibrate the separation between the MFP and substrate. With the MFP set up, we are now ready to move on to operation of the MFP. During operation of the MFP, dispensing is controlled by LabVIEW software. Device operation is visualized by eye and with a CCD camera. Before starting proper aspiration, inject some liquid to make sure the aspiration syringe is oriented properly and that there are no bubbles. The MFP is then immersed in the buffer. We can now begin the injection of liquid while monitoring the flow and confinement of beads. The injection aspiration ratio varies from 1 to 3 to 1 to 10, depending on the diffusivity of the reagent with the surrounding buffer and the desired geometrical flow pattern. Finally, the probe can now be used for a variety of applications. The surface patterns shown here were achieved by the MFP with fluorescine labelled biotin on streptovidin coated hydrogel glass slides. The injection flow rate was 1 nanolitre per second and the aspiration flow rate was 10 nanolitres per second using 10 microlitre and 50 microlitre syringes respectively. The gap between the surface and the probe was 5 micrometres. The MFP can also be used for local staining and processing of cells and tissues. The flow confinement prohibits diffusion of the reagent and allows precise chemical staining of cells, as shown here. A monolayer of fibroblast cells was stained with 100 micrograms per milliliter of dye I. So we've shown you how to operate the microfluidic probe. When doing this procedure, you have to make sure to avoid any bubbles on the system and to make sure that the microfluidic probe surface is parallel to the substrate. So that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.